Good morning students, my name is Ms. Maritzane. I am your tutor for the Certificate in Early Childhood Education, Creative Arts 1. So we are going to discuss um, a scope for, it's not a scope, but just for you to focus on certain um, modules in the book and how you are supposed to study in order for you to be successful and achieve the marks that you are supposed to get. I will be concentrating on the manual that you also have. So let me start. So this presentation is for August 2019 and November 2019 examination. And it is not an examination scope, but it is a guide. Now the examination guide. Now this examination guide covers all the units in the module with questions selected from all units. The paper that you are going to write is set up so that you write on the paper itself. Do all the learning activities in the guide and then to check the answers given at the end of each module. So after, each, after you go through the module, at the back of your module, there is an activity that you have to do and answers that are given at the end of the module also, just for you to make sure that you did the activity correctly. The quantity of lines given will also help you to determine the length of your answer. So if the question says define uh, seven aspects of a module, of a topic, then you are only supposed to mention seven. Based on that, you will also see that the marks are given on your right hand side. So you don't have to write a lot of stuff when you just have to define. Also look at the marks allocated at each question to determine how many facts to write to obtain the correct marks. So if it's an explain question, you have to explain in detail, comparing to defining. Our examination format is as follows. The duration of your paper will be two and a half hours, 420 marks. The examination script consists out of three questions with subsections. For example, question one, it will have, question one will have 1.1, the question 1.2, the question 1.3, and 1.4, the question. And answer all questions with subsections, please. Now we come to the questions. The examina examination papers are set up in three levels. We, whenever you do activities to obtain marks, there are assessment objectives that you have to achieve. So those are the levels that we assess you on. So each question usually starts with a verb, a command word. So please make sure to understand what each verb means. Like for example, if we say define, you just have to define. Don't go into detail. When compared to uh, explanation, you have to explain in detail and if possible also give examples. This will guide you what to do, what, this will guide you to what action you are expected to perform. That is now the action verb that we are talking about. <clears throat> now failing to perform the correct action will result in low marks and or the loss of valuable marks. Possible verbs that we use in the examination. Now knowledge with understanding is one assessment objective, is the very first one. If we, def this, if we say define, what do we mean? We mean we have to give a concise, clear, authoritative meanings do not give too many details 
but be sure to state the limits of the definition. So it's straightforward, just give a definition. If I say, if we say identify, you have to recognize, you have to name or list the features. And that is knowledge with understanding, which means you have to recall from your memory to be able to answer that one. Application is the next assessment objective. You have to describe, state the points of a topic, give the characteristics and main features, illustrate or draw. Illustrate means this by describing to give it. Illustrate it means describe by giving examples of making drawings. So you have to do substantiate the facts. You have to make some drawings. Analysis is the other assessment objective. Outline. Give an overview of and indicate the main features of something in a concise and systematic manner. Explain, set out purposes or reasons, make the relationships between things evident, provide why and or how and support with relevant evidence. That's also where you come in with um, giving um, these advantages and advantages of certain aspects. Discuss, write about issues or topics in depth in a structure, in a structured way, arriving at a conclusion. We are having sample questions. For example, question one, with its subsections, 1.1, identify Henniker's seven characteristics of creative children. Now you can see the seven is highlighted in red. It means not more than seven. And for you to be able to achieve your seven, full seven marks, you cannot even write less than the seven that has been asked. 1.2, identify the four elements of early childhood music curriculum. There you just have to identify the four elements. Please do not go into explaining what each element means. Just identify the four elements. Then we've got 1.3, it's a typo error there. Discuss how to manage an early childhood art class so that order is maintained. So in every classroom that we are having at schools, there are rules. Each teacher comes up with certain rules. So a normal classroom, the first rule will be no noise when you enter the class, you walk in a, in a, in a line, um, no eating in the class, you do not speak unless you put up your hand, those kind of questions. Now those are general rules of a classroom. So in order for us to maintain order in the art class, we are working with paint, we are working with brushes, etc. So that, that rule for the class to maintain order should be based on the art class. So please don't come up with any kind of, of, of rules to maintain order in a classroom. Arts class is different. Draw an example of an impulsive child, an anxious child, a shy child, an angry child, and an insecure child. So what you can do during the examination when you are asked a question like this is to just have to imagine we have facial expression sometimes when we are angry, people can see on our behavior, our facial expression can show that we are angry. And then the body language also, that also counts. So 
you have to know impulsive child, anxious child, how, how they look like when they are anxious, a shy one. So please, when you do drawing, make clear drawings that can show the, 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 the impulsive child or that can show that this one is anxious child for us not to sit and wonder where does it fit. And then you also have to label the drawing so that it can be clear which drawing goes for which child. And then discuss the value of displaying learners' artwork in the classroom. So you have to discuss the value. What does it bring in the child to see his work being displayed? We, we, we put value in the work of the child if we display the work for the child to feel good and to try and improve on the next drawing that he's going to do. Sample question two. 2. 2.1. Write a proposal to the principal and school board stating why the finances, time and material for visual art should be increased rather than cut back. So when you write the proposal, there is a format in the book that you have to follow. For example, you must indicate your, 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 your address the address of the receiver, the date on which this letter is, is being written. You have to address the person in a proper way. You cannot just say, Dear Claudia, for example, Dear Mr. Whoever. That's the proper way of greeting. Because the person will just lose interest in reading a letter that does not address them in a proper way. And then your content should be very persuasive in a very ordered manner you cannot just write in a rude way for asking money to be increased you have to state your facts why do you want the finance to be increased for the materials for the visual art class and then 2.2 outline how to involve learners in keeping rhythm and tempo the involvement of learners in a classroom is very important so how are you going to keep involved the learners, the shy one, the one that doesn't want to do anything, how are you as a teacher going to involve this learner in doing the rhythm and the tempo? Explain how to plan and prepare for a puppet-based lesson for young children. So when you do this one, you have to explain Young children are different from the older ones. So there are uh, specific ways how a lesson can be planned for, uh, for this kind of learners. Sample question 3. 3.1. Describe how to make a tambourine or a maraca or a drum or any kind of other music instrument that you are instructed. Now, if you think of a drum in your imagination, in your brain, then you will think of a round object that makes noise. So when you have to describe how to make, very first one to do is to come up with the necessary materials or equipment that you need for that specific uh, music instrument. And then you come to the steps you combine what and what, and then you come at the conclusion where the decorating part is coming in to beautify this music instrument. And then we are at 3.2, where we explore, you have to explain how to involve children in body percussions. That is a full explanation needed. Question four, sample question four. Define the following terms. Harmony, rhythm, and tempo, soprano, tenor, bass, baritone, tonic solfa, octave, genres of music. So you have just have to give us a definition of those ones. 
And then 4.2, identify the seven principles of art. Please only identify seven. So there is an example of the music of the music um, terms that we have to know. So you will, you will, you will if, you, if you are busy with your studies, you can just put up a table like this where you come up with um, main terms for this word, for this uh, music terms, for you not to forget the definition. So you can just define, give a simple meaning on the right side of the table for you to be able to remember what harmony is, what the rhythm is, what soprano is, etc. Now the diagrams in enhancing understanding of information, fact or knowledge. The same. Come up with a table like this. Make a drawing for each learner. Now while you are busy writing exams, this table, after you draw it up during your studies, will assist you in remembering the format of the faces of, 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 of this uh, child. The impulsive child, the anxious child, the shy child, the angry child, the insecure child. The music instrument instruments the same. Because what is the use of um, if there are certain materials missing to finish off this music instrument, then the music instrument is not complete. So try by all means to make a list of the music, uh, the, the materials needed for the music instrument to make it a complete music instrument. Now we do have um, a specific question here. And this is now how to approach the question. If the question is, for example, outline the kind of preparation a visual class teacher has to do. This type of question can be specific. It talks about the preparation and you should mention what is needed for all to be order, in order. Now, it is based on a visual art class. Not the mathematics class, not the science class, but the visual art. So those terms are already specifying to you what the answer is supposed to be. Now all your discussions should be limited to the visual art class only. And its set up, its set up is completely different from a normal classroom. Exam preparation and writing tips. When it comes to the examination timetable, make sure you know what rooms your exam will be written in and what time it will start. So you can consult the IOL officers for those details and not the subject tutor. Materials that you need for writing your exam you must carry enough pens because sometimes the pens can disappoint so you can carry two or three pens for safety pencils a watch a ruler and if you cannot see far or you are having eyesight problems you don't forget your glasses your student card and any other material that will be required when writing your exams examination you will come across long type of essay questions that I have been carrying the weight of 15 or 20 marks like in the assignments so how can you approach this kind of questions because it's impossible to memorize those two or three pages that are given in your main in your manual I would advise you to come up with a mind mapping tool for yourself now what is mind mapping? 
It is a visual information management tool that helps us structure, organize, memorize, arrange, brainstorm, and learn information in a highly specialized way. So I've, I've shown you an example of mind mapping. You come up with the main, the main issue. And then you branch it out with smaller ones, subsections. So that will be a guide for you on how to come up with possible answers to this long essay question. Now the steps for mind mapping. The very first step is start in the middle with a central idea. Step number two, create branches to represent subtopics. Number three, add details to your mind map. And then the last one is to make connections. We have our main one here. It is to create a drum. And then we branch it out. What do we need to make the drum? So the, the next sub one is materials needed. And then you branch it out. You will need a coffee can with a plastic leg, for example, construction paper, glue, scissors, paint, brushes, sticks, string, feathers, and bits. After you collect these items, you will be needing the steps into creating now the drum. You paint the coffee tin or you cover it with the construction paper. You let it stand to dry and when it's completely dry, you glue all the decor and then you can add the wooden sticks. If you formulate it your mind map, formulate your mind map like this. It will be easier for you to answer questions and to come up with certain solutions. And then your steps will also be in a chronological order. It will not be mixed up. For example, you will not have, you will not, after the materials needed, you will not come up with paint the coffee tin. It must first be the materials that you need before you come to paint the coffee tin. That is also applicable to the essay questions that you will be answering for 15 or 20 marks. So that is your own summary in your mind. So when you write, you write in sentence format, please, and answer it in a proper way. This is just to give you the ideas how to do it. Now during the examination, you have to write your details correctly, read the exam paper a couple of times to make sure you understand the instructions and questions. Sometimes we just read and then you just read the, 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 the verb or you just read school and you do not write uh, read further about what about the school. You just come to a certain conclusion to say, okay, and then you just write whatever comes up in your mind. You must read properly two times at least to understand what the question is about and also how to carry out the verb, the command verb, define, explain, outline. Those command verbs will guide you in what is expected from you. Now make sure to answer all the questions. Please, I beg you, answer all the questions, even the ones that you do not know, because you never know you might score a mark. And do not dive into writing without first reading the entire paper. First go through the paper from the beginning to the end, before you start writing, before you start answering. Now you must write in an organized and concise manner. I do, we do not want to see you writing question one, 
1.1, 1.2, and then 1.4, and then you show with arrows that 1.3 should go up or come down. It must be written in a concise manner as it is numbered in the question paper. All the best for the exam. As I said, I'm Miss Claudia Maritane. My email, maritanec at gmail.com. My cell phone number is 081-854-8166. And the time slots to contact me is from 7 p.m. up to 9 p.m. Thank you very much.